Coming up on the sports desk, the West High softball team had one goal this season and one goal only. Bring home the chip. And we've got your CIF highlights. It was also chip time and fun time in Little League Baseball. Plus, the stars were out in high school boys volleyball. The all-stars, that is. All this and so much more. The sports desk begins right now. Welcome everyone to the only sports show designed with the Torrent sports fan in mind. Now, if you're wondering exactly how the West was won, we're going to show you in just a minute. But first, don't forget to show us some love on social media. Keep us in the loop on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Share your videos and photos, and don't forget to give us some ideas for future stories. Remember to tag us when posting, and we'll return the favor. It's real easy. The West High softball team certainly has a flair for the dramatic, don't they? They've had plenty of late-inning heroics this season, which of course resulted in thrilling come-from-behind wins. And it's that kind of stuff that makes the Warriors so much fun to watch. For quite some time now, their nickname has been the Cardiac Kids. A very fitting nickname, and let's face it, they've certainly earned it. Just when their opponents think the game is over, the Warriors remind them it ain't over because the Warriors are far from finished. The Queens of Clutch advanced to the semifinals of the CIF Southern Section Division III tournament, and that's where West earned a home game against visiting Atascadero. The winner goes to the CIF title game. Oh my. We pick things up after Samantha Petch's RBI triple in the bottom of the first that scored Summer Kissling and Micah Inglis. So Petch is on third now, and starting pitcher Miley Newman is at the dish. And Newman pops up, but doesn't pop out. The ball is mishandled by the right fielder. It results in an RBI for Newman. Petch would score from third on the play, and just like that, it's 3-0 Warriors, and we're still in the first inning. Warriors ace Miley Newman took care of business at the plate, and now she's going to take care of business on the mound. And here's an example of how good Miley's heat was. Look at this. Vicious! Bottom of the second, Atascadero trying to get something started with two outs, but Newman fans, Gabriel Hinzu, that's one of her five Ks. Inning over, it's still three, zip, west. Top three now, watch this. Taylor Herzig hits it right back to Newman. She throws to first, where Claire Lohiza was off the bag, not pictured, that's a double play. West is cruising. Top of the six now, and this is where things get interesting. Claire Lohiza hits a chopper to Summer Kissling. Lohiza beats the tag. She would advance to second. And Taylor Degnan bunts. Lohiza runs to third. Rebecca Chung's throw is wild. Lohiza scores. Bailey Doherty is out at third. And Riley Jones is up now. She hits an RBI double to center field. And that's good enough to score Degnan from second. And now it's a one-run game. West is up three to two. Top of the seventh now. Things get real interesting. A runner on for Lohiza. And this pitch is gone. A two-run homer to left field. And all of a sudden, the Toscadero takes the lead. It's now four to three Greyhounds in the seventh inning. The suspense is building. Bottom half of the inning now. West down to their last three outs. Haley Cowing leads off the inning with a walk. Three batters later, West is down to their final out. Micah Inglis walks. Cowing goes to third on the play, so now it's first and third for Samantha Petch. Or is it Samantha Clutch? She shows bunt and then goes yard. It's a walk-off homer to deep right field. Cowing and Inglis score on the two-run bomb. Samantha Petch is definitely Samantha Clutch. Wow! Talk about winning in dramatic fashion. Holy cow. The Cardiac Kids right there do it again. Another come from behind victory, and it couldn't have come at a better time. The CIF Southern Section Semifinals. How about that? In the words of Mel Allen, Warriors win by the final of six to four. 
Miley Newman went the distance for the victory. She finished with five strikeouts. Samantha Petch, a.k.a. Samantha Clutch, was one for four with three runs batted in and one run scored. The three RBIs, of course, came as a result of that game-winning walk-off homer. And after the game, we asked the Warriors about that dramatic home run, starting with the young lady responsible for it, Captain Clutch herself. I've been in that scenario before plenty of times where you're with two outs, you have two strikes on you, and you just need to get the ball out the infield. And that's what I was thinking at that point, like just get the ball out of the infield, like just get a base hit. That's all you're thinking about. We had a runner on third. Base hit's going to score no matter what. We tie up the game, but to come up with a hit like that, I mean, it just makes it even better. When I was on base, I, I just kept pumping my um, Sam up because I knew she was going to hit the ball. I just kept having faith. And anything that was going to be on the ground or anything hit off the fence, I was going to go home no matter what. And look what happened. She hit a three-run home run, and then we won again. I can't even describe it. The feeling was ridiculous. I just, oh, I don't know. I was just so glad it happened. Like Sam, that's, she's been like that all season. She's been clutch, so I knew she was going to pull through. I told the girls the whole game that three runs wasn't going to win the game. And, you know, it was a, it was a great bottom of the seventh inning for them to come out and, and work the pitcher. And the pitcher's really good. And she had, struck us out a bunch of times, but it shows our never say die attitude that we've fought all year long down to the last out. I mean, what an amazing, amazing at bat that she put together there at the end to win us the game. And that victory sent the Warriors to a place they were confident they would get to this season. And to tell you the truth, it was the only place they cared about getting to. And that would be the CIF title game, which took place at Deanna Manning Stadium in Irvine. West faced off against the Wildcats of Redlands East Valley in the D3 final. So it's come down to this, folks. If West wins, they get the chip. It's as simple as that. Warriors waste no time. Top of the first inning, no score, no more. Runners on first and second for Rebecca Chung. She hits a grounder to Autumn Bennett at short. Her throw to the plate is wild. Summer Kissling scores from third. Samantha Petch advances to third. And just like that, it's already 1-0 West. We move to the top of the third. It's now 2-0 West. We got second and third for Brianna McGee. And she doubles to center field. Samantha Petch and Faith Yee will score. Warriors lead 4-0. Bottom of the fourth now. Wildcats will get on the board. Runner on third for Amaya White, and she drills this pitch all the way to the fence in center. Madison Ferraro scored from third. White gets an RBI triple. Wow, Wildcats down three. Next batter, Samantha Carson. She hits a rib single to right field. White scores easily from third. Wildcats cut the lead in half. It's now four to two West. Warriors added another run in the fifth, top six now. Summer Kissling is at the dish, and this young lady had herself quite the game. She knocks in Haley Cowing from second. Kissling led the West offense going four for four with an RBI and a run scored. It's now six to two, Warriors. Things got a little scary in the bottom half of the inning. West ace Miley Newman walks in a run with the bases loaded. Yikes, that cut the Warriors lead in half. Then, this single to left right here makes it a two-run game. West is up 6-4 to four at this point. But, here it is, the moment you've been waiting for. The final out of the game, it's a grounder to Summer Kissling. Who else? She throws to Jess Porter. Championship! Warriors win the CIF Southern Section Division III Championship, their first CIF title. The celebration says it all. This is exactly what these girls were playing for all season long, and it is well-deserved. Look at the hog pile there. you got to love it. That's what sports is all about. Wow. And there you have it. West wins the CIF title by the final score of 6-4. to four. As I mentioned, Summer Kissling came up huge in the championship game, going a perfect 4-4 four for four at the plate with one RBI and one run scored. Brianna McGee also added two RBIs, and ace Miley Newman goes the distance for the dub with three strikeouts. Congratulations to the West Warriors, the 2018 CIF Southern Section Division III champions. There is definitely something in the water over there at West High School, 
because it's turning into Title Town USA. That is for sure. And the postseason didn't stop there for West High School. Two athletes from West were competing in the CIF Track and Field State Championship meet, which took place up in Fresno. Rory Aberton and teammate Caleb Terrell were repping the Warriors at the 100th CIF State meet. And let's see how they finished. In the 1600 meter run finals, Aberton finished in fifth place, not too shabby, with a time of 4.13.06. And in the 800 meter run prelims, Terrell finished in 14th place with a time of 1.54.63. Congrats to both West High runners on great seasons. And speaking of West, all the stars were hanging out at West High School recently. It's true, the high school's gymnasium was filled with stars. And that's because the South Bay Athletic Club, in conjunction with Smack Sportswear, put together the first annual South Bay High School Boys Volleyball All-Star Showcase. How cool is that? Very. And the very best in high school boys volleyball were on display at West High that night, and that's where we sent our very own Cedric Welton. And he files this report. This evening's first ever All-Star Game featured the South Bay's top boys volleyball competitors from the 2018 season. Sponsored by South Bay Athletics and Smack Volleyball, but all the smacking was done on the court. First set, blue team takes the early lead after a serve falls short. They take the set 25-20. Second set, red team comes out swinging. Match point, South's Luke Krzmarzik on the serve. Kill attempt blocked by Redondo's Joe Roca, then he caps the playoff with a light top of his own to take the set for his team. Red wins the set 25-13. Third set, Bishop Montgomery's Daniel Matheny set the tone with three early kills to give Team Blue an 11-4 lead. The Blue team would then take the third set 25-16. Fourth set, final play of the match score 24-23. Matheny with a punctuation kill to give the Blue All-Stars the set and the game 3-1. I caught up with the All-Star victors Cole Koosh and Daniel Matheny and got their reflection on winning this first ever All-Star game. I heard uh, my friend Eric on the red team told me that they were coming out and doing this and I thought it was awesome. You know, I wanted to play instantly. I feel like vo men's volleyball has a lot of potential and I feel like it's going to grow over the past, over the next couple of years. So. It was great to be a part of the first match for first All-Star game. Matheny and Koosh were quite the tandem for the blue team. Matheny locked up the game and finished with 19 kills and six blocks. Koosh was the game's MVP, doing it all for his team with 20 assists, 13 digs, four kills, and three blocks. Both of these stat stuffers were pivotal in the team's victory. Uh, match point, uh, I got set. I saw angle was open, went for it, and I just... I wanted to finish the game off, you know, I wanted to win. <laughs> it, it's, it's pretty special to, to be out here, you know, getting to represent South and, and kind of cap off a great season that we had in high school with, with uh, playing against uh, top competition like this. But, you know, I got to give it to other guys, you know, they, they really played well and made me look better. What an awesome platform to honor these standout athletes and congratulations to all the participants and schools represented on their phenomenal seasons. Reporting from West Torrance High School, I'm Cedric Weldon for the Sports Desk. Cedric, thanks. Former athletes and coaches from El Camino College received a call to the hall. And that's the type of call you will always answer. The Warriors inducted their Athletic Hall of Fame class of 2018 recently. It was the 28th class inducted at El Camino, if you're scoring at home, and I know you are. And here's a list of your inductees. Kyle Petter, a power pitching left-hander who was also a power hitting outfielder. He led the Warriors to the state final four in 2010. First team All-State volleyball player Brent Frohoff. He's actually in several Hall of Fames for volleyball. How cool is that? That guy's a stud. Wrestler Don Garriott was a two-time All-American while at El Camino. So was Kiff Kimber in swimming and diving. And former NFL player Aaron Craver is considered one of the best running backs in Elko football history. He led the team to the 1988 Pony Bowl Championship. How could you forget that? 
Karina Wilherstein won two state titles in women's volleyball. And you can't forget the other swimming and diving legend, Micah Carlson, who led Elko to an undefeated season in 2003. And the 1964, 65, and 66 three-peat state champion teams in wrestling were also inducted, and deservedly so. And here's a nice group photo of the inductees. Check this out. Looking sharp, guys. Congrats on your Hall of Fame inductions. Like I said, well deserved. There's nothing like Little League Baseball. Having played the sport many moons ago, I can safely say there's something different about it. And more importantly, the memories from it last forever. It's popular because it's fun, and it's also popular because you can learn a great deal while playing the game. The coaches, of course, are responsible for that. And recently, we took a trip to Riviera Little League on Championship Weekend to meet with one of those coaches. As always, a great crowd on hand over there at Finley Field. They love to show their support for these kids, which is awesome to see. You're watching a semifinal game right here between the Knights and the River Cats. These teams play in the minor division, which consists of 9- and 10-year-olds. This season actually started back in February, making this the 25th game of the season for both of these teams. Most of these kids start with T-ball when they're like 4 and 5 years of age, and this is the point where you start to see them develop the basics of the game. So think about it. If you're a coach, it's fun to watch these kids grow into fundamentally sound players. Sure, they're going to make some mistakes along the way, but that's natural. Knights head coach Terrence Peterson explains the process and the progress. The kids have definitely come a long way. We got kids at the beginning of the season that weren't even swinging the bat. They were timid, scared. But as the season went on, um, you can see everybody in my lineup, they're all swinging the bat, putting the ball in play, um, doing a really good job. First stop is uh, Little League, you know. Once we get them through Little League, hopefully we prepare them for, for the next step, which is, you know, high school. Another semifinal game was taking place at the exact same time over at Martin Chevrolet Field. That's where the Marlins were playing the Phillies in the major division. This game was also a fun game to watch. Plenty of scoring in this one. I mean, lots of scoring. And once again, and perhaps most importantly, plenty of support from the local community. These fans are truly amazing, and don't think for a second that any of this goes unnoticed. Tonight, you saw there was a lot of fans here. That's kind of a, a normal thing, even though it's a playoff game tonight, but that's kind of a normal thing on a Saturday night down here. People come down, it's a very community-oriented league. A um, lot of great families, great kids, and um, really good experience. The Riviera Little League has produced some tremendous ball players over the years. It's something they're quite proud of, and if you attend one of their games, you'll know why. The family atmosphere sells itself. None of this is possible without good coaching, of course. And different coaches will have different philosophies. It's how they roll. Here now is an interesting take on how to approach the postseason when coaching 9- and 10-year-olds. Like I tell the boys, the regular season is mine. Playoff time is theirs. Um, you can ask any of, the, any of the, the kids, and I tell the parents, I said, regular season's mine. That's what I work for. Um, when we played our last regular season game, I told them I did my job. Now it's time for you boys to go out. Playoffs is yours. The postseason is yours. I like that. Congrats to Coach Peterson's Knights on winning the Riviera Little League Minor Division Championship. And congrats to the Marlins on winning the Major Division title. And our Little League coverage continues. Let's face it, the closing ceremonies in Little League are the best part of the season. Hands down. I mean, come on. It's a non-stop celebration, after all. Torrance Little League wrapped up their season recently, and according to Danny Miskell, it was party time. It's closing day for the Torrance Little League spring season, which means it's time to bust out the food, the jump houses, and bring all the kids together. These kids, they play each other hard all season. You know, they're not friends for those two hours when they're, uh, when they're playing each other, but then they come out here and they're all playing pickle together and baseball and throwing the football around. So it's good to see that the community comes back in the end. And the best part of having a closing ceremony is receiving your trophy and having all your friends, no matter which team they play for, cheer you on. I like seeing uh, my friends uh, being uh, all-stars come up and get the trophies 
I like to see them take pictures. And I just uh, liked that we had this uh, special day to commemorate the season we had. One of my favorite memories was when um, we, the game was tied um, and I'm a leadoff hitter. So it was bases loaded, two outs. And in my mind, I was thinking, go home or win this. So when the pitch came, I loaded up, swung, and hit it. The third baseman missed the ball, and we scored, and we ended up winning. Love this little man's attitude. Go big or go home. Now let's meet some first place champions from the training division. And AJ, I am here with the first place winners of the training division. Meet the Blue Jays of the Torrance Little League. Say hi, guys. Hi. So who wants to tell me your guys' overall score this season? Um, so our overall score this season was um, 20, 20, 22 wins and three losses. 22 wins and three losses. So how does it make you guys feel to be first place winners? Good. 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 Tell me, what was the most exciting thing about your guys this season? We won the playoffs. What was the playoffs game like? Can you go ahead and take us back and run us through what the game was like? It's like our usual games, except there's like, there's all the teams, and but there's only a couple winners that would go to the championships. Yeah. Yeah, only two winners. Only two winners. So, do you remember what the score was from that game? Um, championship game 6-4. It was 6-4. So you hit a home run during playoffs game. Can you go ahead and run me through that play? Um, I hit a line drive right over the shortstop's head. Yeah. One, two, three, Blue Jays! Closing Day also held a hit-a-thon event to fundraise for Smack Cancer. In the fall season, one of Torrance's Little League players became very ill. So the league came together like a family to give back. Uh, it means the world to me. My, my brother's family really appreci appreciate all the support that Torrance Little League provided and all the fundraisers and, uh, you know, they're really supportive of, of the cancer of, of, you know, my nephew. The league will be donating 100% of the proceeds to Smack Cancer. And Coach Flores says this wasn't even his or his family's idea to begin with. It was actually the league. It was actually the league reached out to me every single time. You know, we're going to help this. We're going to try to do this and um, give to my nephew and ask, you know, come out to throw the first pitch. He was really excited to, for that. Um, the league really reached out. Krista Corn Cornette uh, really put it all together. Uh, she was really involved in all the fundraising here, and I appreciate it all the support she gave to me and my family and to my brother's family and to Michael. My family really appreciates all the support that the league provided this year. They may be separated by divisions and playing for different teams, but the Torrance Little League is still one big family. With this being the closing ceremony, things aren't going to be picking up again until the fall, but we can expect to see a bunch of these little guys playing in the All-Star Leagues this summer. Reporting from the Torrance Little League baseball field, I'm Danny Miskell with the Sports Desk. Those kids were straight flossing. I like that. Great stuff. Danny, thanks. And congrats to the Tigers on winning the Torrance Little League Minor Division Championship and to the Dodgers for winning the Major Division title. Can't wait for the summer season to start up. This next story rocks. And for good reason. It involves a rock climbing class for kids that takes place at the Torrance YMCA. Brace yourselves. You're about to enter the High Adventure Gym with Danny Miskell. And I guarantee you're going to have a rockin' time. It's got the name for a reason. You just drop in and start climbing. Rock climbing's different from the average sport because you're more or less defying gravity, which is why these kids love hanging around. It's such a great opportunity to challenge yourself and get empowered and you know, we just see transformations when people come and pushing through their fears, uh, progressing, pushing their skills, learning how to climb. And taking it one rock at a time. The kids are figuring out which rock is going to come next so they can pull themselves up and climb higher. Just like how Desiree Turkheimer is doing right here. She's coming down from her climb now, so let's ask her how it went. It was really fun. I feel really good every time I... Um, Every time I reach the 
top and I buzz the buzzer, I mean, it's a feel of accomplishment. And more than just a sense of accomplishment, Desiree enjoys climbing because she feels like, well, a Tom Petty song. It just makes you feel free. It makes me feel kind of alive to just get up there and climb and then free fall. I like free falling. When you're rock climbing, you need a partner who's going to have your back. That's where the belayer comes in. Youth instructor Monty Crow is helping the kids climb up by securing them from the ground. He explains how he belays. So what I'm doing right now is uh, as she's going up, every step she takes, I want to pull her slack so she doesn't want to fall. And then with my uh, carabiner and my harness, I'm, I'm pulling her up, not pulling her up, but she's pulling her own self up and I'm making sure she doesn't fall. As the instructor, Monty not only helps these kids reach the top, he's also seen them grow up right before his very own eyes. From when I first started working here, I've seen kids who crawl around to now be able to walk. Kids who uh, can barely finish one, now they're on three all the way. So, you know, that's a, uh, it's a fun moment for me because I've seen kids develop, you know, uh, become stronger. This wall is 30 feet high and it consists of six lanes, starting with the easiest lane on my left and working our way all the way to the hardest lane to my right. These kids, they come back here every chance they get to keep getting better and better with their rock climbing skills. When they finally reach the top of that hardest lane, can you imagine what it is that they do when they get up there? I have kids who like to dance on the wall, yeah. uh, shake their head, go crazy <laughs> as they're going up. Or uh, when coming down, they do Spider-Man poses. Now, after watching these kids climb, I just had to get in on some of the fun. Ishani Oja is the sweetest nine-year-old girl. She's about to go up, so I decided to tag along. All right, Ishani, how do you feel? I feel really happy. Yeah? <laughs> and I feel excited. And... And you like coming and climbing here a lot? Yep. How often do you come up here? A lot of times, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Wow, so you come like almost every day of the week. Yeah, almost. I love it. <laughs> I know it's really fun because <laughs> when you climb, it's almost as if you're climbing a really tall cliff and you're seeing a beautiful scenery. It is. It is a beautiful scenery up here. I mean, we see so much. Not like what we can see from down there, right? Yeah. <laughs> so are you ready to go ahead and hit the horn together? Yep. All right, let's do it, girl. All right. You got it. Good job. The sound of that horn right there makes these kids feel like they're on top of the world. And it's one of the many reasons why the Y loves having the climbing wall here for them. No matter what, they've taken a lot just as far as the accomplishment and empowerment and confidence that comes from that. I think you learn a little something about yourself and that's something that we love offering to the community here. AJ, you gotta come down here and climb this wall. In fact, anybody who wants to come and rock climb, the Y is the place to be. You don't even have to be a member. You can just come on in and hop on the wall and you will see how you can go to such great heights. Reporting from the High Adventure Center, I'm Danny Miskell with the Sports Desk. Wow, Danny's got skills, look at that. Thanks, I am so there, Danny. All you need is a pair of closed-toed shoes with some good rubber soles, and you're good to go. The rock climbing activity takes place Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday from 5 to 8 p.m. at the Torrance South Bay YMCA. For more info, you can visit their website or just give them a call at 310-325-5885. All right, that does it for this edition of the Sports Desk. Thank you so much for joining us. As always, we appreciate your support. My name is A.J. Batone, and I've seen, heard, and said enough for one week. We'll continue this conversation again next week, I promise. Until then, don't forget to follow the Sports Desk on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And remember, you can email us as well. We'd love to hear from you. That's all the time we have, sports fans. We'll catch you next time right here on the Sports Network.